All right guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm really excited to showcase to you guys my game room tour for 2024. There has been a lot of changes in the game room tour, some small, some big, some things being moved around and stuff like that. Compared to the 2023, there's actually two new rooms that was not part of the 2024 game room tour. So we have a whole entire office, which you guys are obviously getting a sneak peek at right now. And there's also a brand new Disney guest room as well to showcase to you guys to see what that room's about, along with some other changes with the you know basement game room and the arcade as well that is now fully in a much better state than it was in 2023 where it actually has machines fully lined up in there. So a lot to get into today. And most importantly, you guys are noticing it probably as well right now. For those of you guys who have a 4K you know, TV and stuff, I'm doing my game room tour for the very first time in 4K. I'm actually doing a lot of content now in 4K with a brand new camera and stuff like that and really good microphones. Uh, so the quality is gonna go up on this channel as well. Now, obviously when I do my top tens on, on you know games and stuff like that, or my VR content, that's not gonna be in 4K because that's not possible right now. But when I do product reviews or game room tours or, or things that obviously I can actually record, or of course my travel videos and vlogs that I've been doing, those will all be done in 4K. So a lot of the content on this channel is gonna go up in quality when it's obviously possible in 4K. So look forward to that and look forward to this video now being in full 4K. So let's go ahead and get into the video. Gaming tech, eating brekkie is the gaming tech. Going for a brekkie is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is the gaming tech. Gaming tech is all right, guys, as usual, we're going to start with a one minute overview, one minute to, to two minute overview on everything. So you guys can take a quick look and then we'll get into full details about everything. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and start right here at the game room tour as we usually do. And let's go into some detail on all of this stuff as you guys are looking at here. So this is my sports wall uh, as you're walking down to the main game room here. Uh, this has been here for a while. Obviously, a few things have gotten added compared to, you know, you know this uh, LeBron thing that I got when I went to California recently. This little Kobe book that I got as well underneath his, uh, you know, the Bryant jersey and stuff like that. 
Uh, a couple of pops have been added. I mean, I just add things when it comes to sports that kind of match this area. Obviously, you can tell I'm a huge Devils fan and stuff like that that we have here with a bunch of autographs from like Brodeur. My jersey over there, obviously right at the top is signed by Brodeur. Uh, just a bunch of different stuff here. Obviously, Lakers are my other team. Giants, Niners are, is my other team in football as well, as you guys are looking at here. Um, little Eliash uh, collage there, the Stanley Cups, the Devils have won. Banner right there, the Mighty Ducks, because I love that movie and it matches the brand of sports. Uh, my little Brodeur Shrine right here, here at the corner. We got some giant related stuff. I'm also a Mets fan, so we got that. Eli Manning and some of the stuff going on there. Um, Pops here, I'm missing one for Eli Manning, but those have gotten so expensive, I'm still waiting to get one of those. Um, but yeah, that's the sports area as you're walking down along with the Brodeur banner. And then of course, as you can see here, right here at my feet, you can see man cave, enter at your own risk. And I also have, uh, you know, my name there entering the man cave here in the basement. Even though I don't know if the basement's considered a man cave anymore because I have rooms kind of spread out all over the house now uh, for myself, uh, depending on what it is, but you guys will see that throughout the video. But this little area here, and that's why it says Arcade Lane, I would say this whole entire row right here. So this whole area here is kind of all arcades and stuff like that, as you guys are looking at. And uh, it kind of leads into the arcade room as well. So this, that's why I put that sign up there. So it kind of feels like this whole lane is the arcade going into that room and also the machines that are kind of lined up in this area. So uh, starting right here, when you walk down, you got the Marvel superheroes machine here. Uh, this is the machine that I have had for a while. Uh, as you can see here, there's the marquee and stuff like that. I think it looks really good. This is modded with a Pi 4 with the, um, you know, with a bunch of different ones. This is the special edition that they came out with and I modded it with a Pi. So, and it has this really co cool arm comic book style, um, you know, flavor on here. It's fantastic. And it has these Sanwa joysticks and buttons. Uh, when Arcade One Up did that, and this machine's awesome. Um, some Disney Infinity characters sitting here on top. I also had this light up Iron Man uh, thing right here that looks like it's actually coming out of the wall. Has a really cool 3D effect. I love that thing. I usually leave it powered off when it's not being used because the batteries die like crazy, just like this Thor hammer as well. As you can see here, it looks like it's coming out of the wall when it's lit up, uh, which is really, really awesome. And then I got some just signs here, kind of match like the comic book style right here next to the machine. Uh, here is my little shrine when it comes to uh, mini arcades from New Wave Toys. Uh, I got this little uh, black lit posters and stuff like that. So there's a black lit light up there, as you can see here. A bunch of different ones. There's a couple of new ones compared to last year's game room tour, uh, like the Coke machine and stuff like that. Uh, you can see that they're all kind of running there. Uh, all having a good time. Love displaying these when people are over uh, and all my different characters that are on here, uh, you know, playing these different machines and stuff from the 80s and 90s, which is cool. And I love these black lit posters. They match really well, works really good. And I love the look of this arcade one and uh, the way it lights up with the arcade. And then this, these little shelves here is where I kind of put like the new wave toys, like smaller stuff that they've come out with, like these mini uh, arcade sticks that you can use at 25 cent. Look at these little cassette tapes and stuff like that that they've come out with. So that's kind of where I display those and I got a couple more left when I need to. One of the new things that was added into this area is this Wheel of Fortune from RK one up I went back and forth on this for a while and then it went on sale and then I decided to finally get it. So you can see the Wheel of Fortune here. I actually have a blast with this. Yes, I wish the screen was a little bit bigger, but it works fine, especially for the slot machines, which is what this is primarily used for. I've done a full review on this. And, uh, you know, it's cool to have a slot machine like this, uh, you know, with online leaderboards and stuff in the house, which is fun, especially for people who like that sort of game. Here is my Star Wars original machine here. This is fully modded with a PC, as you can see here. Uh, and it has all the different uh, Star Wars games and stuff like that, flying games and stuff like that is freaking awesome. Uh, I love that machine, uh, being able to play all the Star Wars favorites, including the three that obviously come on it, and you know having a full PC build with that. And this is my our, my Legends pinball machine. This is the HD version. I'm still debating on if I want to get the 4K machine. And if I do get the 4K machine, if I keep this one and have this running certain tables and then the 4K machine running other tables uh, and kind of put them side by side because this couch is, pro is, is something that I have up for sale. This used to be my movie room couch uh, that I had here. Uh, when this room used to be a movie room, but obviously that's no longer needed. So I'm trying to sell this couch, make some more room to line up some arcade machines over here if I want to. Um, and this is kind of going to go away. 
uh, at some point this year when someone actually you know wants it. It's, it's currently up for sale on Facebook Marketplace, but this will be leaving. Uh, it did. It, I left it here because it was a pain to get rid of, but now it's that time to make some more room for arcades, see what we do there. Um, it did its purpose here. I kind of used this for the Infinity Game Table to kind of play in front of it, but not really worth keeping a whole entire couch for. I mean, no one really sat there and played that anyway, so this is something that's going to probably be disappearing, and this will have to find a new home more than likely. This is my shrine to Game of Thrones right here. Uh, this was here when the movie room was here, and I haven't really decided where to replace this, especially because I like the way that the shelf looks, even though it doesn't really vibe with anything in this area. Uh, that thing is autographed by a bunch of different people from Game of Thrones, and I love House of Dragons and stuff. So I've left it there for a while um, until I decide for a better spot, but I love the way that that area looks. Then we got the DDR pads here for when I play Step Mania and stuff on the PC. Little DDR machine or uh, poster there to kind of remind me that that's where the shelves are. Uh, this used to be my chalkboard. Again, when this was a movie room, it was used for other things in the past. We'll see how long that stays and stuff like that. Uh, and then this is just a keep calm and play pinball sign um, for pinball machines. Turn in the corner here. This is the board game room. So that's how I have the, the kind of like the board game drive here. This is the board game room now. So again, this whole lane is going to be arcades and then including the doorway that we'll go into afterwards or it's dedicated to the arcade. And then this is the board game room. Uh, as far as what changed in here, that Oliveira board game sign that's in the corner there is what used to be here where the arcade uh, casino kid used to be, which is obviously not there anymore since I had to make room for this and that kind of shifted over there. That's really the only thing that changed in this specific room from 2023. Uh, I love board games. That's why a lot of people come over in this house. Uh, I have a, obviously a lot of board games. Like I have like over 300, I believe. Uh, I love some of the posters here, like Will Wheaton's poster right there, which is awesome. Uh, some of the stuff that board gamers say is a good poster. Some board game books, uh, a board game that I actually made to be able to play a bunch of my different games, depending on who's over and stuff like that. Oliveira game mashup, which is really cool. Um, it's kind of like a Mario Party combined with board games and stuff, which is really fun. Um, no, not like Monopoly, a little sign right there. Top 100 board games that I still have to scratch off some of the ones I played. We got some comics. This was uh, something that I had here as well when it was a movie game room, but it still matches. I love the magazines and stuff like that. Uh, I never was really huge into comics until a few years ago, so I've gotten a few of them and obviously have some old school magazines in here as well, like Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo Power and stuff where I keep those. And a little sign at the top, read one today uh, with the whole kind of showing up there. Then we have the board game sign, and then this is specific uh, specific board game poster that is themed to me, which is really cool that I got customized in Etsy. So it says in this house, things can get dicey and stuff like that, but these are based on games that are my favorites. Our colony works together. How many of you guys can guess what these board games are fun without what, from and what it's relaying to without actually looking at it? So we can exit cities and complete tickets. We clank in space. Betrayal never goes unpunished. We place workers and build new decks. We live the life we always wanted. And then it has a symbol of the board game. We are champions of Zeta City. This is a hard one that most people are probably not going to know. Uh, but these are some of my favorite board games themed on this poster uh, with cool quotes and stuff like that. Again, then I have a lot of different board games here uh, on these shelves. Coming back here, I got a mini fridge where I store some like really cool stuff uh, like Mickey's ice cream. I got Icy's in there. Uh, I got Capri Sun in here, kind of like 90s themed snacks in here if I want to have them. Uh, a bunch of Capri Sun in there that I have. This is a snack area that I sometimes fill out when people are coming over. Uh, right now it's got Dunkaroos and Pop Rockets and Slim Jims and stuff like that. Uh, again, sometimes I put chips out here at the bottom. Uh, these are my two favorite games uh, currently of all time, which is why they're here. Feed the Kraken, really good. Dead of Winter is one of my favorite games. Uh, who remembers Drop Mix? That's sitting right here. And then uh, these two board games here, which are really fun uh, to play with and stuff that are right here. Uh, and this poster here, Board Game Hero Challenge, which is awesome. And then another cart with some more candy. This is where I put the candy and stuff. People love these Twizzlers, so I have these Twizzlers here ready to go. We've got some Pezzes here that you can use. Uh, Pezzes right now, and I need to buy some, but they usually go right here. So it's a little cart for that. And uh, Crokinole sitting right there. Uh, when people want to play that, we kind of take that out. And then all these board games here. This is the last board game table uh, that's sitting right here uh, in the middle that we sometimes play. Um, and then this is the board game table as well. As you can see, it fits a lot of good amount of people. But that's everything in this room that kind of comes in here. Uh, and then we go into the game room side, the retro game room as we walk through these doors here. And the retro game room here, 
uh, as I showed you in the overview. We'll go through, through things one by one. Uh, there are some things in this room that definitely changed from last year, uh, but some stuff did stay the same. Uh, this kind of stayed the same. This is my retro PC corner. We have a Windows 98 DOS machine sitting up there, and then we have an Alienware fully built Windows XP machine uh, from the old school case that we all remember when we were kids. I love that thing. We got the Logitech speaker sitting right there. When I'm playing, I, I, I hang the two other speakers up there so I get full 5.1 surround sound. When that Windows XP machine playing some of those old school games like Unreal Tournament and you know some of those other great games on the PC era. And uh, you can see here all the different PC games that I have. I kind of put some things up on the wall that kind of reminded me uh, when I was a kid. Uh, like I used to always put like, you know, my favorite celebrities and stuff on the wall. So I have some of them right here. Uh, these are some of my highlights from the PC, uh, like Leisure Suit Larry, love that series, Half-Life and Diablo. Uh, a lot of different stuff on here. Uh, Nickelodeon orange chair sitting right here uh, from the Nickelodeon. You got a little aim symbol right here, as you can see. Uh, just a bunch of different stuff here. We got an old school CRT, obviously, as you can see. And then a bunch of things from the 90s. Uh, you got the Sidewinder controller and stuff like that to be able to play those games. Uh, we got old school laptops like the Nickelodeon edition right there. Uh, we got the Vetrex sitting back there, a bunch of different boxes from PC games. We got the AOL CD back there, uh, you know, some old school cassettes and stuff like that. We got this for Microsoft Flight Simulator if I want to play that. Uh, we got the old school Nickelodeon uh, telephone and stuff like that. We got the Palm Pilot sitting over here. If I want to mess with that, that still works. Everything in this house always works. That's one of my pet peeves. If something doesn't work, I get rid of it and have to replace it. I actually had my Furby crap, crap out of me before I made this video, and I already chucked it. And I'm buying a new one. I hate when things are in the house that don't actually work. Unless, of course, if I could fix them. If I can fix them, I will. But I hate having things that are unfixable and kind of sitting in the house because that kind of defeats the purpose in my mind of what I want this house to be. I want people to come over touch different things, play different things, uh, you know, whether it's retro games, retro toys from the 90s, whatever it may be, I want people to play with this stuff, and if they don't work, that doesn't really work out. Um, we got an old school iPod right here, the classic edition. Uh, this is the Logitech mouse that was really famous back then, and then the retro keyboard. I do have a retro mouse here as well that I can use, along with these retro speakers for Windows 98. This is what I use for the XP machine with these Logitech 5500s that were like the all-star speakers back then and still are to this day. So moving over here in this area, this gigantic area right here, the whole point of this is to obviously play games. And I have a lot of room here. It's really easy to move these things out of the way. And basically I use it for that TV that's sitting right across. And I play a lot of my Kinect games on here. I'm a huge fan of the Kinect. I still love playing that game, Dance Central and stuff like that, or Just Dance, you know, games that require a lot of room, uh, PlayStation Move, you know, those kind of games, PlayStation you know, Move and, and PlayStation I, whatever those games are, Rock Band and stuff that need a lot of space, this is probably where we're going to play it on this nice big screen TV. And here in the corner here is my 90s area here, as you can see here. Um, love the 90s. I grew up in the 90s, obviously, so I have a lot of cool collectibles from the 90s. Um, this is my, you know, shrine to that. Um, I, I'll probably do a more in-detail review on or thought on this because I've added some things obviously since the last time I did it. I'll give you some highlights here. Uh, I got this signed by the Red Ranger. I got this signed by Pete from Jumanji as you can see there. Sorry for the light on there. A uh, bunch of different th things here. I have autographs on some of the stuff. This one here is crazy. This is from the Kids Choice Awards and it's signed by everyone who was at the Kids Choice Awards back then including Amanda Bynes, including uh, a bunch of different people on here. Nickelback's on here. Just a lot of different people on this shirt which is Freaking awesome from 1998. Look at that. Awesome. Uh, obviously, I got some Pokemon stuff on here. I got my Pokemon card collection over there. Um, you know, my Nickelodeon magazines, my Disney Adventure magazines. I, I have a crap ton of those. Uh, Goosebumps, you know, a bunch of different stuff from the 90s that you guys are looking at. Some retro board games as well. Um, just a bunch of cool stuff in this area. Moving right along here, uh, again, that's my Xbox 360 and Xbox One and original Xbox. You have the original Xbox here connected to this TV. When we're going to do LAN play, we have a bunch of TVs in this house and a bunch of Xboxes. That was something we did as a kid and we still do sometimes now where we get original Xboxes and play them together, which is super fun. And this is one of the things that changed from 2023 as we come across this, and that is this PC area right here. This PC area basically used to be where my office was. Um, and you guys will see later on where my office is now. The desks remain the same. I didn't actually take anything out. So you will see, you will think it's the same here. But now this lives as just my 3D PC, which I'm really happy about because my office being down here was always something I didn't like because 
my office was not retro and it was the only thing in this room that really isn't retro. Uh, so it didn't, really, didn't really match the vibe. So I finally moved the office upstairs into its own retrospective room and I left a dedicated gaming PC for the NVIDIA 3D Vision platform uh, with these 3D glasses and stuff like that. I actually, it's down currently right now. I'm actually getting the GPU today. Not that it was broken, but I took the 2070 out of here that I had and put it in my retro uh, build over there that we'll talk about the racing cab. And then I got a 2080 ti um evga the most powerful card you can get from that era because i wanted you know the most powerful card because for the most compatibility and i've done a lot of video reviews or video overviews on the 3d vision platform and, and today's standards but if you want the most compatibility you want to stay with the 20,000 series cards you could use a 4,000 series cards and beyond uh with geo uh, geo 3d and stuff like that that they're working on to make games compatible um but dx9 games won't work and stuff like that unless if you have a 20 series cards and stuff like that that's still not possible so in my case i just have the most powerful platform that i can play it on uh with the 20 series cards and have a dedicated pc for it that's an nvidia 3d vision monitor and we got the glasses hiding over here that's a little shrine over here to the nvidia 3d uh, i got a 3d uh tablet here this is the loom pad 2 um that i use for 3d watching movies and those are the glasses to play the pc i used to love 3d vision back in the day so i'm glad to have this area as a retro area uh to play those nvidia 3d vision games uh you know locked in space there which is awesome here on this side we have my um xbox 360 and playstation 3 and wii u and nintendo switch uh little cubbies and stuff like that with all the different games i usually show off on my shelves uh, my standout games, whether it be games that I really, really like or maybe expensive games, whatever it may be, or rare games. Like, I love the Blur franchise, so that's why that's there. Man, that box is beat to hell that I just noticed uh, right there. And then, uh, you know, Batman, Arkham Asylum, Sonic and Racing. We got Ultimate Alliance sitting right there. Uh, Alan Wake, another great series. And then we have PlayStation 3. I have the Motorstorm series right there, which I love. We got Zelda The Wind Waker HD. Uh, a bunch of different games here on the Wii U as I love the Wii U uh, for what it was. A little Xbox 360 or Xbox One and PlayStation 4 little shelf. I mean, I never really got too many games for it because everything's been digital since then. Uh, Nintendo Switch, I still collect a lot of physical media. So there's a bunch of different Switch games in here, as you can see, highlighting a bunch of them there. Now here in the middle of this side of the room here on this side, uh, I created a lot more space than there used to be in 2023. Now you can actually play these machines without feeling like you're on top of each other, which is exactly what I wanted for this room. Now when people come over, you can literally go on every different section and not be bothering someone else. So if someone's playing Xbox over here and playing Connect, they got perfect amount of room. PC can be played. This Super Checks machine, Devils vs. Rangers, is awesome. People can play that right here with no issues on both sides without hitting each other. And now this is a cocktail machine. This one's actually currently broken um, because the Pi 4 crapped out. So I have a replacement coming in uh, tomorrow, actually, but I turned this on when I was going to do this game room tour, and the red light turns on and does absolutely nothing. Um, it just Even with just unplugging everything, including taking the SD card out, the green light never shows up, which usually means it's dead. Um, so I'm swapping it out and getting a new one and putting that in there. But this is a cocktail cabinet that has a Pi 4 and has a bunch of cocktail-style games on it on the SD card. Uh, have it actually sitting right here, waiting for it to a replacement to get here. Uh, and I modded it with a bunch of different buttons here, as you can see, so you can play games that require more than just the original four buttons that this machine has. So really love this cocktail machine as it adds different flavor to the games that we may love. And then Pong right here, again, all these machines can be played with multiple people still playing at all of them, which is exactly the improvements that I wanted in this room. Feels a lot more open in here. I don't know if it comes across in this video. You may think this room has a lot of stuff in it, and it does, but everything is kind of organized in the way that I like it, and there's enough space for everyone to play everything without feeling on top of each other, which was not the case a couple of years ago when there was the board game room used to be in here and, and things were kind of all over the place but this is the pong four player machine from arcade one up i love this machine especially warlords on here really fun to play now coming back on this side here after we get through the middle there uh here on the top we got my little shrine here of posters from xbox 360 and connect we got the playstation vr sitting right there we got the connect little shrine uh sitting right there we got the um icade sitting right here this has an ipod or an i an iPad sitting right here with all the retro games that's kind of stopped at like the, the version of OS that actually supported things like um, Flappy Bird and stuff like that. The original Flappy Bird is on here uh, and you can play it on the iCade uh, right here if you want to or you can just play it on the iPod. So it's cool to have an iPod sitting right here, the iPod Touch and this one 
frozen in time with the OS's that it, like all those old school games required and still be able to play those old school games, uh, you know, sitting right here, which is awesome. And then over here is my 3D area. I love 3D here. And this is where I got my Holy Grail last year. Uh, this was in last year's video, but this is the LG 4K E6. This 4K TV allows 1080p videos for uh, 1080p 3D movies to, for the first time to be in full resolution since it has the 4K resolution. It uses all of that to show these 1080p movies in full 1080p and not having the resolution or anything, which makes this the best 3D TV you can buy uh, as far as physical. And it's a 55 inch. And not only that, but it's an OLED. So the colors are fantastic. The problem is it's hard to find these TVs without having issues with burn-in because they were made at a time where burn-in was still a very big thing. Mine has a little bit of burn-in, uh, very, very un uh, unnoticeable and 95% of the things I do and the colors look amazing and stuff like that. So I'm really satisfied with mine uh, to have a TV of this caliber at 95% working condition uh, for 3D movies. Like I said, it's not something I sh can show on camera, but it works extremely well. And I'm super happy to have it here. And I obviously just don't use it for my movies, but I also use it for playing 3D consoles as well, like the PlayStation 3 or the Xbox 360. And then I also use it for some of the other TV or other consoles when we're doing, um, you know, things like playing the original Xbox and, and LAN and stuff like that. I also house my mini consoles sitting right here, which is a good spot for them uh, to be able to play on it. But I love this TV. Uh, I think it's awesome. And I'm glad that I was able to get it to get it at, at the condition that I have. Sometimes they go for like three or $4,000, which is insane. And I only paid 800 for mine because I got it locally and super lucky that the guy didn't know what he had. Um, anyway, uh, underneath the TV, like I said, I had the original Xbox there. That is fully mounted out with a two terabyte drive with the entire Xbox library, including mods for w some games, adult games, and yeah, everything you could want basically is on that console. We got the DVD player there in Philips for the 4K or the Blu-rays that I watched. We got the Wii U. We got the Dreamcast sitting over here. We got the PlayStation 2. We got the Xbox 360 Star, or Star Wars edition there. We got the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 um, sitting right there. We got the PlayStation VR kind of sitting there ready to go. If I want to play PlayStation VR, it's kind of all hooked up and all I got to do is plug it into the front. Um, and then uh, we got the Sony PlayStation 3. We got the Nintendo GameCube sitting over there and I do have the component cables on that. And those component cables are crazy expensive. I got lucky as hell with that too. I got it for like 40 bucks back in the day. And uh, those things now go for a couple hundred dollars, um, which is insane. Again, here's my 3D Blu-ray collection here. I just really love 3D movies, facts. And those are my three favorite movies currently, Avatar, Avengers, and Titanic sitting up there. And there's my 3D Blu-ray Blu collection for the most part. And this is my accessories for anything that the, con with the consoles that are sitting on this TV that I might need labeled there like Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation. And that's where all like my controllers are and stuff like that when I want to go through them. And, and pick up what we're going to play and stuff like that. Those are all my Disney Infinity characters uh, and little controller poster there to signify that these are where all the controllers live. And then this is a shelf, as you can see here, uh, with my two posters. This is supposed to be the Xbox side. So we got an Xbox shelf and a PlayStation shelf showcasing a bunch of different things that I love about PlayStation here. A first shelf being a Naughty Dog a dedic dedicated section here with a bunch of different cool collectibles like Crash and The Last of Us and stuff like that, as you guys are looking at here. Then we got a God of War shelf, as I love the God of War franchise. That's awesome. We got a Kingdom Hearts shelf as a huge Disney fan. That's obviously going to get a dedicated shelf, uh, which is awesome. And then the last shelf is kind of dedicated to just showcasing all the other PlayStation properties that don't have a dedicated shelf. So we have things from Little Big Planet, Spider Man, uh, Infamous, uh, Kill Zone, all that kind of stuff, and a bunch of different collectibles from there. Uh, sitting right there, we got the PlayStation. Uh, VR um, controllers sitting right there as well, ready to go. And then we have this little X rocker chair that I use to sit down. Uh, has uh, pretty good uh, speakers. It has four speakers and a subwoofer that is connected for all audio output to come whether I'm watching a movie or whatever. I can either use the TV speakers if I want or just use the speakers that are on this chair for any of the games or whatever is on there. Again, this is my dedicated uh, Xbox One. We got some Xbox stuff here at the top. And then we got a Gears of War shelf sitting right there that is signed by Dominic right there, which is really cool. And the Gears of War 3 uh, game is also signed by everyone, including Cliffy B back then, which was awesome. Uh, we got a Halo shelf sitting right here uh, with the whole entire Halo statue there, which is awesome. This shelf I really like as well. This is my Rockstar shelf, a bunch of different cool collectibles here. We got a table tennis. I love that game uh, shirt. We got uh, the GTA characters in Lego form sitting right there. Uh, we got a Red Dead Redemption 2 Domino set. 
Vice City soundtrack, Grand Theft Auto 3 anniversary mug, just a bunch of cool stuff on that shelf. And then again, the last shelf is reserved to whatever doesn't fit on the other three shelves like Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed. We got the faceplate here when the Xbox was originally made. You can see it says zero hour, which is awesome. Uh, so a bunch of different cool stuff on that shelf. And this is my arcade. Uh, I don't know why that, oh, I forgot to light that up, but that does light up, of course. Uh, this is my uh, retro arcade machine uh, racing cab. Well, actually, I, I don't even know if I can call it just retro because, yes, you can play retro games on it, but it also has newer games on it as well from Steam and stuff like that. Basically, it's my racing cab for anything. This is built with a Thrustmaster, as you can see here, along with the Logitech Shifter. Uh, this is from Buy Stuff Arcades and Retro Lizards Arcade. Both guys are fantastic. Check them out for your arcade needs. Uh, this is obviously Mario Kart themed, uh, and it has a 32-inch screen, and it has all of you know houses all the different games on here it's a fantastic build it's probably my favorite machine in the house or, or one of my favorite machines i don't know it's hard that's hard to pick but it's an awesome machine to play racing games on then here at the corner here we have another retro area so this is my playstation 3 this is where i play playstation 3 uh you know 3d games uh because that was a 3d monitor that playstation came out with officially this pc on the right is the pc build for the retro for the uh racing build that's what this is that's kind of glowing here uh, and then this is where all my retro games live that i want to play on a crt so you can see it's right now playing the n64 uh you can see i have a bunch of different consoles down here we got the nes we got the Intellivision, we got a ColecoVision down there, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, uh, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, uh, a bunch of different games on here. Sega Saturn sitting down there, Super Nintendo, Pikachu N64, another GameCube sitting over here, another modded original Xbox. This is a modded Xbox 360, so I can play those Japanese exclusives and stuff like that on there. Uh, and then we got a Nintendo Wii that is also modded with a little um, hard drive that has all the different Wii games on there that are hard to find or impossible to find. And then I also have a VHS slash DVD player that is hooked up to this CRT. So when I want to, you know, resemble some nostalgia, I got it ready to go. Uh, so you can see actually how's my got to make it take advantage of all the space in this room. Uh, so if you can see up there, that's where all my VHS tapes kind of live. You can see I have stuff from Mary Kate and Ashley. Uh, you know, uh, Franklin from, uh, love that thing when I was a kid, that show. We got um, a bunch of stuff over here from Pokemon, the original starting 14 sets. We got the original Pokemon movie sitting over there. Uh, so I kind of watch VHSs on here and DVDs sometimes depending on my mood and where I want to watch them, which is awesome. And then this shelf here, uh, a little bit of a mess right now because I'm trying to figure out what to do with the Nintendo Lab over here, but this is where all my controllers live for anything on this side. Uh, and again, this is all labeled and stuff. N64, Dreamcast, PS1, Xbox, and all that kind of stuff are just kind of sitting there, ready to go for any of these consoles when I want to use them. Then we got some Zelda uh, shrine back there, like the Zelda uh, shrine back there with the sword and shield, um, which is really, really awesome. Here obviously are my shelves that I have, as you can see here. Uh, this is my, again, I usually showcase the games that are either most expensive, most rare, or my highlights. On PlayStation 2 here, you can see I have Jeff Jam New York, which is a really hard to find game, Silent Hill 3, God of War, the Ratchet and Clank series, Spyro, Persona series, Jack, uh, Amplitude, a bunch of different PlayStation games on here. Here on the Xbox original, we got Halo, Halo 2, Battlefront series, the guy game, a uh, bunch of different games on here. We got Outrun 2006, Coast to Coast, Marvel vs. Capcom, Conquer Reloaded. Stub and Zombies, a bunch of different original Xbox games on here. And this is just some art books and stuff that I have on this dedicated shelf here at the bottom. Now here on this shelf, this is my Sega shelf. Every, every glass shelf gets a dedicated brand, like I had the Xbox and Sony. Now we're talking about Sega here. And Sega has a nice little collection there on top from different things like Sonic Transform, some figures and stuff like that, a little Sega sign, which is really cool. And then the first shelf here is just dedicated to a bunch of different Sega uh, collectibles and stuff like that from all the different properties that I love. We got the Sonic Retro Gamer. We got the 30th anniversary one, some figurines and stuff like that. And then the bottom after that is my Genesis shelf. You can see Mutant League, the hat there, which is really cool. Altered Beast. We got some Genesis books and Comic Zone back there. Next shelf here is the Sonic CD and Sega Saturn shelf. Combine those into one. Uh, never had those as a kid, but obviously I have them now. We have Sonic CD. We have Christmas Nights and Nights, the full on package there. 
uh, and, 30, and three dirty dwarves, uh, really cool. And then the bottom here is my Dreamcast shelf. I love the Dreamcast, never had it as a kid either, but I love that thing now, there's so many good games on it. We got Crazy Taxi here, the figurine, and then Crazy Taxi, the game sitting back there, little VMU sitting there in the front, some collectible magazines sitting there in the back. Um, and that RC car does work. Again, everything in this room is always gonna work, so you can actually drive that thing around. At least the last time I tried it, of course. Um, then here's my Dreamcast collection. A lot of heavy hitters on the Dreamcast. I love where my Dreamcast collection is. So many good games. Heavy Metal, Canyon Spike, Sonic Adventure. Uh, what else is up there? Bangai Zero, uh, Power Stone 2. This was about to fall for some reason. Power Stone 1, Marvel vs. Capcom, Rush, Star Wars, uh, Jedi, some of the Amigo, Zombie Revenge. We got some sitting back there as well on the top so people can see them. Third Strike, Sonic Adventure 2, Bomberman, Fatal Fury, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Gauntlet Legends, Dynamite Cop sitting right there. Sorry, it's a little hard to focus back there, uh, but you guys get the idea. GameCube shelf is amazing as well. I love the GameCube shelf. Uh, this is another one. Uh, so the GameCube shelf here, as you can see, is awesome. Disney Sports Basketball. It's like a $500 game. I was lucky enough to get that. Uh, that, so we got some really good highlights here of the Pokemon, Gale of Darkness, Super Mario Strikers, Zelda, and stuff like that. Then we got my Game Boy shelf sitting right here. We got the Pokemon trading card game full in box. We got the WarioWare games. We got all the different Game Boys sitting right here in the front, which is awesome. We got this Game Boy here, the Micro Edition. Uh, this one's really cool. And then this one here that looks like an NES is a great Game Boy Advance that I have. And then this is the DS shelf. A lot of good heavy hitters here as well, like a Zombie Barbecue and Donkey Kong Journey. Uh, SBK, Metro Prime Hunters. Uh, I do have a bunch of DS's and 3DS's here as well. One of these are modded with a bunch of the 3DS games so we can play without owning multiple copies of the games for games that you can play locally together with local wireless. And then a regular 3DS to use the actual copies. And then the 2DS's here, DS Lite. Uh, all here, everything works again. And then my PSP shelf sitting right here. We got the Vita, two Vitas there to play locally for games that support it with Ratchet & Clank Trilogy, uh, Freedom Wars and stuff like that and all those dedicated games. And then we have the PSP, Power Stone Collection, Hammering Hero, Persona, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, uh, two PSPs here and then a PS, uh, via PSP uh, back there as well. And then this is the Nintendo Wii shelf as you can see here. This is the Excite Bots, uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2, uh, Donkey Kong Journey, all that kinds of stuff sitting right there, a bunch of different great Wii games. Moving along here, my next shelf here is uh, not too much going on on these shelves. This is my Sega CD game, Sega 3D, uh, 32X. I don't have too many of those. Uh, 3DO, some games on there. Sega Saturn, here's another heavy hitter here. Sega uh, Saturn Bomberman sitting right here. A lot of these are heavy hitters here. Uh, Three Dirty Dwarves, Guardian Heroes, Panzer Dragoon. Uh, great Sega Saturn games. Then we have my Super Nintendo shelf. Love the Super Nintendo, I grew up with it. Street Fighter 2. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, F-Zero, you know, all those different classics, Donkey Kong, Country 1 and 2, Mario Kart, obviously, all these different games sitting right here. And more Super Nintendo shelves on here with Zelda, Mario World, Power Rangers, and even more Super Nintendo games on that shelf. And then here is my N64 shelf sitting right here. We got Zelda, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, Super Smash Brothers, uh, Mario Party 1, 2, and 3, and then down below that, we have my PlayStation 1 sh shelf, as you can see. We got Poi Poi, Resident Evil 3 sitting there in the corner, Marvel vs. Capcom, Silhouette, Mirage, 2-on-2 uh, two two Open Ice, Castlevania, Twisted Metal, bunch of different heavy hitters on there, which are all fantastic to play. Next shelf here, of course, we got Nintendo. Nintendo needs its own dedicated shelf. I just came from Super Nintendo World, so we got a little sign sitting right here next to the shelf. Uh, along with some new statues like the Super Nintendo World one right there, which is awesome, along with some collectibles that you guys can see up there. First shelf is dedicated to Nintendo in general, so you can see I got the original pa uh, Nintendo Power, the first one, and the last issue sitting right there. Uh, we got a bunch of different collectibles on here. I love the statue that came with Club Nintendo back in the day with all the different characters. That thing is super awesome. Then the next shelf here is Zelda. We got a Zelda shelf here uh, with a bunch of different collectibles. Then we got a Pokemon shelf uh, dedicated here with the original three Game Boy games, the 2DS sitting right there, uh, the, the Game Boy Color Pokemon edition sitting back there, which is awesome. And then the last shelf is kind of a mishmash of things like the other shelves that kind of don't match anywhere else, like the Luigi's Mansion, like Super Mario All-Stars and Metroid Prime, just a bunch of different collectibles that I've gotten 
over the years. Then sitting back here, we have the Virtual Boy collection. We got the Vetrex collection here, Atari, um, and some of my favorite games kind of sitting on top. We got the Intellivision shelf sitting right here. Nothing to stand out on these shelves here as we go through them, but you guys can take a look here for yourself. And then down here we have uh, the NES shelf. We got a little Super Mario statue sitting right there, Super Mario 3 and 2, as you can see. And then we got uh, the dedicated, uh, another dedicated NES shelf here, as you can see, with Kirby and Link sitting right there. And then if we keep scrolling down, we got our Sega Genesis shelf, of course. It's a little dark in this corner, so sorry about that, guys, but it's a little dark. But both of these are my Sega Genesis shelves. Uh, Gunstar Heroes, Contra Hard Cops, Sonic 3, as you guys are looking at, Streets of Rage 1 and 2, um, Mutant League Hockey and NHL 94, some of the heavy hitters that are sitting uh, right there. So that kind of takes care of this room here, my retro game room. I love this room. So many cool things to make you inspired, like you're living in the 90s and 2000s, so, and I love this area. Now, of course, we're gonna enter the arcade, so I can show you guys a little bit of the arcade here. Here is the arcade. So let's start off by looking at what is over here on the right. So here on the right is a another like cocktail style machine. This is the uh, extension machine from Rec Room Masters where you can play all these games that are kind of this way and stuff like that, which is awesome. All the arcades on there. Then we got my Tron machine. I finally did the mod on my Tron machine here, as you can see with the little screen on top, which looks amazing when you're playing this game. Uh, you can kind of see it right from here. It looks freaking awesome. Love that Tron machine. Little Flynn's arcade sign, NBA Jam, modded uh, with all LED buttons and a full mach arcade machine inside to play all the four player games on here. This is my virtual pinball machine, which has a bunch of different games on it. This is uh, from Game Room Solutions. This is the mini version. Uh, so it's a 27 inch 4K screen uh, along with the back box and the DMD sitting right there. Then we also have my Oliveira Arcade sitting right here, as you can see. Uh, this is obviously a build that has all the different main games and stuff like that sitting on top of it, uh, along with my two sons, Mortal Kombat and Galaga sitting right here. So this is my main quote unquote arcade machine with all the different games on it. There's like 80,000 games on it. Uh, this little touchscreen uh, PC is what I use to keep track of high scores and stuff. It's touchscreen so you can kind of come on it. I can also use it for my carry hooky. There's my crazy picture. Um, I could also use it not for karaoke, for music. If I want to light this place up with music, I can control the music right from there. And it plays through the speakers, which is cool. And then here on the left-hand side, we have the MBSX machine, uh, the Neo Geo machine right there, modded with the Hilo stick. So it has all the different games on there. Street Fighter 2, the only mods that this thing has is the uh, buttons were all upgraded. So all these have been upgraded here, which is great. Um, and it obviously has online. And then we got the Miss Pac-Man. These are the two machines that I added since last year. Uh, the machines that used to be here were outrun. I got rid of that one. Didn't need another racing cabinet. So I thought it was time to get rid of that. And then I also moved one of the other machines upstairs that you guys will see. So this Pac-Man machine is awesome. I love having a, having a Pac-Man machine in the house. And this is the best one, according to my opinion, that Arcade 1UP made. And I love that fact that the newness, the thing that it adds that's new to this arcade is the slanted machine that you actually get to play these games properly the way that they were in the arcades, that it's actually slanted. And of course it has Galaga and a bunch of other machines along with online leaderboards. And then we have Dragon's Lair, a really classic machine that I wanted to add to the arcade, especially with a nice scorekeeping thing on top that is hard to replicate on a main machine and stuff like that. Really, really nice here. Uh, I'm actually gonna light up both of these coin doors. I got it ordered already to light up the coin doors for both of these because uh, they don't look as good when they're not lit up, when they're side by side. I mean, I know my other machines don't have coin doors anyway. Maybe I'll add them in the future, but they don't have coin doors now. But the fact that these do and they're not lit up kind of annoys me when I look at them. And then here is another one from Retro Lizards Arcades uh, and in combination of Game Room Solutions. Um, this is awesome. It is a full light gun machine. It has all the different light gun machines, uh, games that you could want. PlayStation 2, Super Nintendo, Techno Parrot, House of the Dead, Time Crisis, everything is on here, along with Gun for IR. Uh, the best light gun games, uh, light gun technology that you can get for your guns. I love this and I love the fact that I have all my different light gun games on this machine. Then we got some LEDs on top like the open arcade sign and those Pac-Man signs and of course that projector there that really makes it seem like you're looking at a 3D image. It doesn't look very good in here, but in person this thing looks amazing and showcases a bunch of 3D images that I have on there. And then of course we have the LEDs sitting right here. 
this is another game, uh, room that got a huge improvement compared to last year because it is now feels a lot bigger. Everyone who, who came here said the same thing. And the reason for that is because as soon as you walk in here, before there used to be our arcade machine right here, the virtual pinball machine used to be right here. So it was like not as easy to walk in through. Now everything has a dedicated space and it feels like a big arcade even though it's not a big spot. And it just feels like you're in a cozy arcade when you're in here and I love the way that it looks now. Obviously it's fully done because there's an arcade machine now here for everything. So nothing will leave unless if I'm replacing it with something. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna get rid of anything in particular, uh, unless if something good comes out that I really wanna replace it with. But right now everything's in good standing and I love playing these arcades. And this is my gathering room, as I like to call it here, uh, where I have my dining room table here, uh, right here, and then a bunch of arcades that just don't fit downstairs because of the ceiling height. Uh, at least not, not all of them, because those two over there definitely fit downstairs. They were actually moved up here, but these don't fit downstairs. These, actual, these are my actual arcades. Uh, these are real arcade machines that you find at bars and stuff. As you can see, this is Big Buck Hunter Reloaded. I love this machine. I love the Big Buck Hunter franchise. The fact that I have a real Big Buck Hunter here where I can play against other people at bars and stuff like that, online play and stuff like that is amazing. And the fact that they keep adding con content to this game, like I did a review that they added The Walking Dead to it now. Uh, it's just an awesome, awesome machine. Uh, I love this thing and I'm kind of crazy. It, it never so ceases to amaze me that I actually own a real arcade in the house. Speaking of real arcades, here's another one. Uh, this is the Retro Raccoons uh, from Incredible Technology. This may be one that actually gets sold off. I do have it up on Facebook Marketplace to see what I do. Uh, just because I might want to put a giant four player machine here instead that houses every single game instead of just having, you know, just this one particular game. It's like a Mario Party style game. It is really fun, but obviously space is limited. So if I could sell this for the right price, I might get rid of this and actually put a four player, um, you know, arcade here and get rid of that NBA Jam that I have downstairs just because the NBA Jam obviously doesn't have a lot of room for big four people. So I don't know, it's something I'm considering, but we'll see how that goes. But either way, this is a really fun game, really unique. Again, that you're not gonna come across someone's house. And it's like a Mario Party style mini game where there's like over 40 mini games in the game. I think the biggest problem is, is that they told us that they were gonna update this game with new mini games all the time. And we haven't gotten a new mini game in over a year. And they've only released like four or five altogether. So obviously the machine must not be selling that well, um, but still disappointing for all those of us who got it. And another real machine here, the Golden Tea Machine. And this one's modded with two setups here. It has the arcade collection that came out last year, which has Target Toss Pro, Silver Strike Bowling, and Power Pup Golf. I wanted to get this for so long. I love Silver Strike Bowling. There's no other bowling game like it, and it's fantastic. And there's a switch in the back to also let me switch to Golden Tea, which is fully online, uh, which is awesome. Just a little switch here on the back. Um, I've done a full review on this as well. Um, full on pedestal there with all of these games integrated golden tea fully online i do want to upgrade this to the 2024 version eventually just not really in a hurry because i don't really play online that often i usually play people here but um anyway the next machine here is the nfl blitz machine as you guys are looking at here this machine is awesome um i love it even though I, a lot of people talk shit about this rk one-up machine i still think the controls and the fact that it has a real 49-way joystick is awesome and uh, the only thing I'm doing to it that I'm finally getting to, and I literally am waiting for it to come in, is the NFL Blitz marquee is gonna be changed. Even though I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, it definitely isn't as good as the other machines surrounding it in this room. And it definitely is a little bit washed out. So I'm finally gonna get that replaced. And I'm also going to mod the coin doors to be lit up. So, but other than that, full online play, didn't do anything to it, never will, because that defeats the purpose. And the fact that Blitz is in HD, it definitely looks better than the, you know, one that you can play on MAME and stuff like that as far as the HD version goes. Obviously, the hits are all gone and stuff like that, so take your poison on which one version you'd rather have, but I have both. I can play this one if I want the HD graphics and stuff like that and get to play online with others, or I can play the MAME version to get all the old school hits and stuff like that. So either way, I can play either version I want. Then here in the corner is the IR Arcade machine. That's one of the machines that was downstairs that got moved up here when I got those two other arcade one-up machines, the Dragon's Lair and stuff. This got moved here to the corner and what used to be here got moved somewhere else, which you guys will see later on compared to last year's video. Uh, this IR Arcade is loaded with all the different classics that they have on here before they kind of went out of business, obviously. Um, so I have a bunch of different games on here that I could still play that you can't really play in other arcade machines as easily. So I love, I still have a lot of fun with this arcade machine. There's still a lot of good games on here like Galacticon, Galaxy Champions TV and stuff that, yeah, you can play on Steam if you want to, but it's awesome having it in arcade form because some of these deserve to be in arcade form and it's a shame that they obviously went out of business. 
Coming over here is my little bar set up here, and this is my JBL touchscreen machine and the Mega Touch. These machines are awesome. You get to play all these different games that you remember from the bar before iPads were a thing, different puzzles, cards, quiz and word games, all that kinds of stuff. Uh, these two are very similar to each other. They were two competing brands. Uh, and I'm actually selling this as well. If anybody wants this, reach out to me. I have it up on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, this is the JVL machine. So I'm getting rid of this one and leaving the Mega Touch because it's the one I remember from the bars the most, uh, even though this is a bigger screen and it's in HD. So it is nicer, quote unquote. Um, but I'm getting rid of that one and just keeping one um, of these. But really happy to have the Mega Touch. And uh, this is really played a lot in this house when people come over. And then we got the dart machine over here that actually lets you play online against others, which is fantastic. I love playing darts, but it's, you can't play by yourself, which is why I can't, you know, I never really play that often. But the fact that I discovered this like, you know, a year ago or so, and now I get to play against people all over the world and see them on camera and play darts is just an awesome, awesome experience. Come along over here is my movie room. Uh, this was here last year. Uh, a couple of things were added to the wall and to the shelves if you're paying attention. But uh, the idea of the room is obviously still very similar. This is where my 120 inch projector lives. Um, this is, you know, quote unquote, movie room slash living room, uh, where I have all my different collectibles here from Marvel, because obviously matches the movie room theme from Stranger Things. Bunch of different autographs from different things here, as you can see from Agent Carter, that's autographed, that's autographed. Uh, from Iron Fist there, autographed. Uh, Jessica Jones autographed that pop there as well. Uh, Stranger Things, Harry Potter. Uh, some figurines here to hide some of the cables in the back. We got the Denon receiver. We got the Xbox Series X that lives in here. We got the Nintendo Switch in here. Um, another couple of figurines. And then this is my Ready Player One shrine over here because obviously I love Ready Player One. We got my little DC shrine over here. A uh, bunch of Harry Potter collectibles. Mighty Ducks, one of my favorite movies. Wreck-It Ralph. Um, and then my shelf dedicated to a bunch of different things from different movies like Warner Brothers stuff, like Pixar stuff. As you can see here, my Ghostbusters and Back to the Future shrine right there. Even has the original letters from Back to the Future sitting there in the back. Uh, little shrine here like Power Rangers, Terminator, A Never Ending Story. Just a bunch of different movies that I love and different collectibles to show off here. That's my Transformers, that robot that's like $900 that I got when it was cheap is amazing. Bumblebee sitting back there. There's my little iRobot, a smart little device there in the corner. Um, and then over here is my little Star Wars shrine, a uh, bunch of different Star Wars stuff on the top two shelves. And then here at the bottom is just more stuff from different things that I like, like the Avatar franchise and horror and stuff like that. And Jurassic Park that's sitting right there in the corner, along with the Star Wars poster, Star Wars lightsaber and stuff. This is a hockey horn that actually goes off when the Devils actually score. The Devils did terrible this year. Let's not talk about it. But it goes off just like that by itself. But I could also hit a button. And then this iPad is on the wall here because this is how I control everything in this room. If I want to touch one button to watch a movie, the projector comes down. Uh, the, sorry, the projector screen comes down. The projector actually turns on. That's sitting back here. And then I have a 7.1, a 7.2.2 speaker sitting back here. As you can see here on the top, I got the, you know, Atmos speakers and then the speakers there in the corner along with the projector. Uh, here uh, is just a little coffee where I keep some of the books that I'm currently reading from different things like Friends and Star Wars and some Marvel stuff. And then my um, Arcade 1-Up Infinity Game Table, the 18.5 inch that I bring to friends and family's houses, kind of lives here when I'm chilling here watching TV. And, uh, you know, I just play with that and play the new games and review games for you guys and stuff like that that you guys have seen videos on. Uh, but, and the only thing that's leaving in this room that's changing, uh, like I said, the room's perfectly done, uh, you know, eventually I might get a new projector because that projector is a few years old now. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but this popcorn machine is something I'm trying to get rid of because it just doesn't really fit the room anymore. Uh, so I'm getting rid of it. I don't use it very often anymore. This used to be here when I had a fully dedicated movie room downstairs in the basement. But I'm going to get rid of this and kind of just move that shelf and center it and get rid of this as it's not something that's being used anymore um, in this room. And then here is the Disney room. And this is a new room that you guys did not see last year at all. I'm a huge fan of Disney. That's why I'm a travel agent. Guys, reach out to me if you want to support me for free. Um, for all your travel needs. I don't just do Disney. I do Universal, cruises, all that kinds of stuff. But I dedicated... I, this was always a guest room. But now it is a Disney-themed guest room, which is amazing. And a, a lot of cool stuff on here. But let's go ahead and start off over here. 
Uh, over here, this little Disney thing is really, really cool. I'm not going to turn it on now because it's going to make a bunch of noises, but you can actually power this on and scan your magic band that you get at Disney, and it will actually play the fireworks and stuff. I did a review on this and actually play the Happily Ever After fireworks and stuff like that, which is my favorite show that Disney World does. Um, and then we got a quote here on the wall. I hope that we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a mouse. So then we got a happily... Uh, this is my happy place sitting up here. Then we got the Samsung... TV. This is the Disney 100th Anniversary Edition Samsung Frame TV. It scrolls through a bunch of different images uh, that are exclusive to this TV, which is awesome. It has the embroidery that uh, says Disney 100 on it uh, here on the side, which is awesome. It matches. It was a perfect thing to release because it matched this room perfectly. It's exactly what I wanted. Then we got a Yogaba sitting back here that people can sleep on or chill on while they're watching TV and stuff. Uh, another little poster here. All your dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them. This is my Disney glass shelf. Uh, so we got some Disney characters sitting there on top. And then each shelf has its own dedicated thing. This is the theme park shelf where I have different collectibles that I've gotten at the theme parks like pins and cups and magic bands and stuff like that. The next shelf is my favorite Disney video games like Disney Infinity, uh, like Kingdom Hearts and, and you know, the Super Nintendo games and Disney Lorcana, the board game. And then these are my favorite TV shows uh, like Boy Meets World, which is my favorite all-time show, Bug Juice, Jet Jackson, so weird, who remembers that? And the Jersey, who remembers that? Some of these I had to make my own DVDs because there's nowhere to buy them because they never existed, like the Jersey and so weird. And some of the times you can't even find all the episodes and they were lost in media, which is insane. But um, better to have some episodes than none. So I put those all on a DVD so I could watch them very easily when I want to. And then some books here at the bottom related to Disney as well. Here on the shelf, we got some Disney-related items as well. Uh, here we got Topanga from Born Meets World that actually signed this to me. As you can see here, which is awesome, this is my favorite scene from Born Meets World. Um, Halloween Town got that signed to me as well. Uh, this is Phil of the Future, which is also autographed, which is cool. We got a Born Meets World hat. And then a Happily Ever After sign. Like I said, that's my favorite show, that uh, fireworks show that Disney does. The Most Magical Place on Earth sign, along with the two little Mickey hands. And then here on the bed... Uh, get to look at all of my favorite rides from Disney, which is awesome in shows. So you got Fantasmic, you got Rise of the Resistance sitting back there, uh, Splash Mountain, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, just some of my iconic favorite rides uh, from Disney, which is awesome. And then my favorite Disney Channel movies like Brink and The Color of Friendship and Alley Cat Strike. I love those movies and those are classics. Got a letter Be Our Guest sign, which matches the theme of this being a guest room. And then this right here is my favorite music-related Disney movies because we got High School Musical, Camp Rock, and Starstruck. And the reason for that is this is where the Guitar Hero machine currently lives that used to be in that gathering room, which matches perfectly because this machine is mostly used for karaoke and Guitar Hero. That is related to Disney. I love coming in here and, you know, playing karaoke uh, with Disney songs and stuff like that, and it matches those three right there. And playing Guitar Hero with related to Disney or Guitar Hero in general. It doesn't have to be Disney, but the point is. But this is actually being rethemed. It's been being rethemed for a while. I'm trying to get someone to finally retheme this thing uh, because I want it to match this room. And it's going to say, like, you know, Disney Edition or however they, they frame it out. But it won't say Guitar Hero anymore just but look, so it matches this room. Um, so that's in the process of being rethemed, and I can't wait to see how that looks. And it's going to make the room look even better when it has, like, the Disney art and stuff on the side. And then here is my Disney closet. I changed it up here and now it's actually open concept design. Uh, we got the books here from Disney Classics sitting right here on the left. And we got some stickers here from some iconic scenes and stuff from movies that I really like in quotes. And then this is my Disney closet where I house all my Disney shirts, like the Roosevelt shirts that I've done videos on and stuff like that. And just Marvel and Star Wars and Disney shirts in general, my Disney shoes and stuff like that. And nice little LED back there. Uh, and all these different shoes that I have going on, my little luggage case when I go to Disney and stuff like that, ready to go, some Disney hats, and then a little Disney shelf just to house some other Disney collectibles that I had nowhere else to go, like the Disney Polly Pockets or the Disney Cena edition, um, you know, Disney magazines, and just Disney figurines in general, some Miley Cyrus and Demi Lovato concerts that I went to when I was younger, so... Really, really cool stuff. I'm really happy with the way that this room looks and feels, and it's just a happy place. I, I come in here and watch TV, and it just makes me feel happy to be in here because, obviously, it's Disney-themed. And the last thing I almost forgot to talk about, uh, two things, actually. The bed is obviously themed to Disney, and it says we are never too old for Disney. That is facts. Never too old. And also the Disney TV. This is where I watch the DVDs that I was talking to you guys about before, and these are some other DVDs on top, along with an Alexa-themed Disney um, Echo, which is awesome.
because I can talk to it and I will actually answer Disney questions and stuff. I did a full review on that as well. And it will actually respond to Disney questions and stuff. So it matches perfectly in this room and it's just an awesome thing to have. Um, but yeah, this room is awesome. Uh, I love the fact that the images are always changing and stuff like that on the TV. I love the frame TV and just uh, so much better than the way that this room used to look. I wish I took before and after pictures, but this guest room was a mess before. I uh, didn't even want people to sleep in here. And now I can't wait to show people where they're going to be sleeping when they come over, especially if they're Disney fans. And the last room we're going to be talking about is my office. This is another new room. Like I said, it moved from downstairs. And this office is my dream office. Uh, this is exactly what I always wanted. Uh, I have a secret labs L-shaped desk. And I always wanted an L-shaped desk because I wanted more room than the desk that you guys saw downstairs because I obviously work from home a lot now. Uh, not just on YouTube, but just my regular job as well. We work from home sometimes, so I wanted more space than just my regular gaming PC. Uh, so now I have plenty of room to do all of that. I have a Secret Labs chair. Uh, the Secret, Dag Secret Lab desk has been fantastic, even though it was expensive, but it was well worth it. Uh, best desk I've ever had. We got the Govi curtain lights here that you can show whatever image you want, which is fantastic. Some more Govi lights here that matches the theme. I added some Govi lights around the desk as well, as you can see here. Um, I got a little Your Gaming Techie sign up there, which is fantastic. Um, LEDs everywhere uh, back there as well. But uh, besides the chair here from Secret Labs, which is really comfortable on the desk here, we have an LG 42-inch OLED TV. I use this as my monitor. That is correct. It is a TV, but it is the, my opinion, uh, for the price and money, it is a fantastic PC monitor because you can get 4K, 120 hertz, and you get the OLED colors. And you get NVIDIA G-Sync, and it's just an awesome, awesome, uh, you know, screen. And 42 inches is perfectly fine by my needs. I don't have any issues using it at the 42-inch level. And then this is the new PC build that I built when I made this room, uh, which is awesome. It has a 4090 inside um, and is basically spec'd out. I love this case because it has a little screen here at the corner that shows everything going on in the PC, like uh, the time, the temperature, all that kinds of stuff, whatever it may be. Uh, we have all of that going up on there. Uh, then we have my YouTuber subscriber count sitting up there. Guys, subscribe. Let's get to that 20,000. Um, thank you all for all you guys who are already part of this journey, who have been with me for a while. And then here in the corner are all my VR headsets. This is my Quest 3, my Apple Vision Pro, my PlayStation VR 2, and my big screen beyond uh, that I use on PC. So these are where all those are housed. And uh, then I got some signs up there. That's the, the Steam, you know, things that you use for the big screen beyond to play. Um, got a little Steam Deck, or sorry, not Steam Deck, the Stream Deck sitting right there, uh, which is awesome. Uh, and then obviously Razer keyboard and mouse sitting right here in front of me. The Logitech uh, G-Sync speakers, which are really nice. Um, yeah, this is my dream office. I love the aesthetic. I love the panels that I put on the wall there that really add the look. I love the lights going around it, the Gobi lights and everything. This room just looks fantastic and it looks modern and sleek. And uh, I, another room that I just, I mean, I love going into any of these rooms that I show you. That's why I made them the way that they are. But another happy place when I come in here and I go to work now and I'm like, oh, this room just is a good room. And then another lamp over here in the corner that I can match to all the Gobi lights in the room. I can sync all of these lights together to do whatever I want, whether it's, a, you know, these are the ones up top or this lamp, which is awesome. Uh, this is like a little thing that I saw on uh, online that I love the idea where you basically just put all your controllers up here and nicely organize them. So I have a bunch of controllers and stuff that I use for PC kind of hanging there. Um, and then over here, we got some three posters that I really like, Beat Saber, Half-Life Alex, and Play VR Games, which is a really cool poster. Game with Passion is a scarf I got from PAX a long time ago that kind of made sense for this room. Um, and then we got a Rocket League, probably the game that I put the most amount of hours into. Uh, on PC and then a little controller sound on the top. This chair used to be downstairs in last year's video, but obviously my PC moved up here and my PlayStation, sorry, I forgot to say my PlayStation 5 is obviously also here. I play it on this TV when I wanna play regular games, but it's in here because I record PlayStation VR 2 videos for you guys or play it in here in general. So that is why this is here because I use this on PlayStation VR to play Gran Turismo or PC games, whether it be VR or not, to play these racing games and I have that ready to go. And this is a really, really nice wheel. This is the Logitech Pro. Uh, this wheel is way better than the one downstairs on the arcade, obviously. This is like a much more expensive wheel with expensive, more expensive pedals. And the force feedback on this thing is amazing, especially when you're playing VR games. It just adds to everything. And it's just an awesome experience, uh, you know, playing that on here. So I have it set up there in the corner. 
Here on the wall, we have the little Logi or sorry, the Amazon um, Echo device again. This one's the, the touchscreen one that looks like a frame. It was perfect to add in here. I can see all the smart devices in the house, see when packages are arriving, when I'm in the office or my calendar and stuff like that, which is cool at a glance or ask it whatever I need to ask it. And uh, another open concept design when it comes to these shelves. Guess what? This is where all my gaming shirts are. Surprise. Uh, this is where I have all the Roosevelt gaming shirts that are related on here or 90 shirts and stuff like that that are all related to here. The LED sign that I added I thought matched perfectly. It says level up, which I think kind of matches the vibe in this room perfectly. Uh, you're leveling up when you pick a shirt because it's gaming related, which I thought was pretty funny. And then, of course, uh, a bunch of different shelves for shoes. I uh, only got a couple right now, but that will eventually even itself out. And, uh, you know, just have a bunch of odds and ends sitting up there like this little miracle thing to clean your shoes and stuff like that secret lab screws that i need uh some hats on here that i have and then the top shelf again is reserved for things showcasing that are related to pc whether it's overwatch or titanfall or this uh flight control that i have or just like these signs that i have up here like rage quitting and what moves me and stuff like that and gamer logic and some uh, boxes that i've gotten from different things uh that i haven't that i haven't decided to get rid of yet because um uh, for one reason or another. And then some shelves there at the corner just to, for some extra storage. But yeah, this office is amazing. Plenty of room, everything is open. This is where I also play VR. Uh, it's not as big as the spot was downstairs for VR. Uh, VR on that red carpet downstairs was bigger, but I'd rather play in here uh, because I love the dedicated office space. I love being in this room. I love that this is kind of separated from the retro room like I talked about. Um, so it's been awesome. But yeah, guys, that is my retro, or sorry, that is my full game room tour for 2024. Uh, over an hour long and full 4K. Um, man, editing this video is going to be fun. But I'm super happy to, you know, do this. Uh, like I said, a lot of changes. We had two full game room change, uh, two new games, or, sorry, two full rooms, the office and the Disney room that you guys didn't see last time. Some changes with the arcades that went into the arcades, things shifting around, the other room becoming more open and stuff like that. It's just been an awesome time, uh, you know, decorating this house and doing things to it and, and doing these dedicated rooms that kind of fill my passions and each room has its own dedicated purpose and, and you know, looks really good in my opinion, has ample space and it's just a really fun place to be in when you're home. It makes me happy when I come home every time to have these dedicated spaces and having a fun time creating content for you guys. And I hope you guys found this video fun and enjoyable. If there's anything you guys saw in this video that you guys have questions about, obviously leave them down below. Thank you guys for staying tuned and watching this long if you guys are still here. It was a very, very long video, uh, but I can't wait to you know take you on the 2024 journey and see what we do next. So thank you guys for watching. Until next time.